Hey guys, in today's video, I would like to spend approximately 10 minutes to walk you through a pretty interesting JavaScript exercise related to the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, it is exercise 10, Fibonacci, from the Odin Project uh, course foundations. So let's jump into a demonstration of the JavaScript function. Here we have our demonstration on CodePen. In our HTML box above, we have the description of the exercise. Moving down to our JS box below, we have the JavaScript function for the exercise. So our function is called Fibonacci. So if we console log Fibonacci with an input of four and an input of six, uh, our expected output will be three for the input of four and eight for the input of six. So let me just run it to show you guys. So when we console log, Fibonacci with uh, input or aka a parameter four, we have three here. And then if we console log Fibonacci with a parameter of six, uh, we have an output of eight here. And the reason why is uh, if our input is four, it's going to output three because in the Fibonacci sequence, uh, three is the fourth number in that sequence, assuming that we start with one. So we start with one here, one, and then two, and then three, and then four. So three is the fourth number in the Fibonacci sequence. And then similarly, if we move to our second example with an input of six, um, our output will be eight because assuming we start with one, uh, eight will be the sixth number in the Fibonacci sequence. So starting with one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So eight is the sixth number in the Fibonacci sequence. So all that must have sounded pretty confusing. So let us clarify the problem. Let's first start off with what is a Fibonacci sequence? Fibonacci. Oh, that's such a, that's such a seductive word, don't you guys think? Fibonacci. Okay. The Fibonacci is a series of numbers where the next number is the sum of the previous two numbers. So the sequence that you will see in Fibonacci is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. And the reason for this sequence is because, uh, for example, if we start with 1, 1 here plus 1 will equal to the next digit, which is 2. And if 2 plus three, this will equal uh, the next digit of five. And then three plus five, this will equal the next digit of eight. And five plus eight will equal the next digit of 13. 13 plus 21 will equals to 34 and so on. So this uh, pattern will continue onwards where uh, the next number is the sum of the previous two numbers. Uh, so then for our JavaScript function, let's clarify what is the input and our desired output. So if our output is n, our desired output is the nth number in the Fibonacci sequence, assuming that we start with one. Let's look at our example one and two that we saw in our demonstration. So if our input is four, starting with one, what is the fourth number in the Fibonacci sequence? So taking our sequence that we explain above uh, here where we see here 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 34 uh, we're just going to take an extract of that we see with the Fibonacci sequence that uh, the fourth number the fourth number in the Fibonacci sequence is 3 hence we want to write a function where 3 is the desired output similarly for example 2 uh, if our input is 6 Starting with one, what is the sixth number in the Fibonacci sequence? So taking an extract of the sequence here, uh, uh, below it, I'm just showing uh, the, the nth position of that digit. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then six. So our sixth number in the sequence, eight. Moving on to tab two, here is our analysis of the solution. So this is the up here is the solution provided by the exercise. So first, I'm going to run through the code top to bottom and give you guys a high level uh, brief explanation. And then second, we'll break down the code line by line. 
and show you guys what is happening by demonstrating it in each Excel column. So uh, starting with the high level outline, uh, the first two statements here, uh, these set the conditions for when the user inputs either a negative number or zero. So a negative number um, below zero will return oops, and then zero, if you input zero, it will return zero. The next two uh, let keywords A and B here, uh, these are declaring variables to set an initial value. So let A is uh, setting an initial value of zero and let B is creating a variable called B and setting an initial value of one. And then moving, moving to our next block or segment, uh, this is us creating a for loop. I stands for uh, the iteration. So we've set up I to start at one. And the second part of the for loop is uh, we've set a condition. Uh, so if I is less than our input value, our parameter that is called count, then we will uh, increase the iteration by one until one is no longer less than count. So the third part of the for loop is I++, which is iteration will increase by one uh, near the end of that uh, execution. So the next set is, uh, so the next set here, you may be asking, why is there no var, let, or constant in front? Uh, var, let, constant, keywords are used to declare a variable, aka create containers for storing data uh, and values. Uh, we are not creating a new instance here. We are reassigning or updating um, our previous values. So the equal sign operator here assigns a new value to a variable where we move from top to down. Let, var, and constant are only used when defining a variable for scope, among other things. So once the variable is defined, we can just assign it to other values. And then lastly, return B, uh, the return statement here executes after the for loop completes because it is on the outside of the curly bracket. So this curly bracket here uh, envelops the for loop that we have here. This and then this return statement is outside of that for loop. And then this curly bracket closes our function up here. Now we're going to break down the code into separate columns in Excel. So starting with column B, uh, column B represents our count parameter, AKA our input, which is up here. So this is represented by this column and then in column C and D, those are extracts from this part of the code here where we declare the variables. And then the for, the for loop statement, I've separated into the three separate columns because the for loop has three parts. So that is represented by columns E to G. And then uh, our temporary variable within the for loop is in column H and then uh, our reassignment of variables uh, in this part of the code here is placed into columns I to J. And then lastly, return B is in our last column, which is column K. So let's quickly run through the columns. Uh, column B represents our input, AKA our count parameter. Columns C and D represents our variables A and B. Uh, columns E to G represents our for loop. So column E represents our starting starting I for each iteration. Column F is our condition to test whether I is below our count parameter. I and then column G I plus plus is to increase our I by one if the condition is not met. Column columns H to J represents the code to be executed within our for loop. Column H assigns temporary variable that pulls our value of B. Columns I 
for each iteration, b will be updated to the sum of a um, plus b. And then column j uh, reassigns our a to the value held in the temporary variable. And then column k shows that at the end of our for loop, we will then return b. Let's run through our example where if we were to console log 4, or aka if our input, our count parameter was 4, how will all of this work inside the code? So uh, column b, our, oh sorry. So uh, as I run through each of these cells, you guys can see up here in the form lab bar for Excel, what's, uh, what is it pulling and what is it linking to? So that will also help you understand. Uh, so with column B, I'm just essentially putting, if our input is four, this is what column B represents. Uh, column C, our initial value was set at zero, which was represented in the code here. And then uh, column D, our initial value is one, which was declared here in that part of the code. And then in column, uh, column E, our for loop sets an initial value of one, which is seen here, let i equals to one. And then uh, column f is, is our condition. So our i, is our i currently less than our count parameter? Uh, for this case, you guys can see in the formula bar here, essentially I'm just pulling between these two. So is one less than uh, is one less than four. <laughs> so yes, because one is less than four. So then we will continue with our for loop. So here I'm just showing that, you know, we started I with one. So now I plus plus means we're going to add one. Uh, because our condition is not met, we will increase I by one represented by I plus plus. Uh, in column H, we assign the value of B to our temporary variable where b was one as we saw earlier so here you can see i'm just linking it or pulling it from our previous uh, cell uh, in column i we update our b value to take a plus b so here you can see i'm just adding uh, these two cells a and b to get our new updated value of b and then uh, in column in column j we reassign a to our value that was in the temporary variable. So if I click on this cell, you can see that I'm essentially just reassigning it, pulling it from our previous cell here, which was one. So our new A will be one uh, because, and then in column K, we ignore until our for loop is complete. So because you can see here uh, in the next three rows, it'll be, you know, the for loop will continue. So <laughs> we, we won't, uh, concern ourselves with column K until the very last row in row 28 where the for loop stops. So let's run through uh, the second iteration together. Uh, in column C, uh, our A is now one because it was reassigned in column J in our previous iteration, as you can see here, highlighted blue. Uh, in column D, in column D, B is one which was updated in our previous iteration where B was the result of A plus B. So you can see that here that I'm pulling from this cell. Um, and then in column E, E is now, I is now two because we are on the second iteration and it was updated previously by I plus plus, as you can see here, highlighted blue. Um, and then moving to column F is our condition. So I is two. so it is still below our count parameter of four, hence we will continue to column G. So in column G, uh, because our condition was not met, we will increase our I by one, making it three. And then in column H, we assign our temporary variable to the value of, uh, to the value of B, which was what we saw earlier. So here you can see that I'm just pulling from our um, value previously, highlighted blue here. And then moving on to column I, uh, we update our B value by adding A and B. 
uh, to result in two. So here you can see that I'm just pulling, I'm adding A and B in our second row here to get to two. And then in column J, we reassign our A var variable to the value from our temporary variable, uh, which was one, uh, highlighted blue here. So essentially, column, column I, column I creates the next digit in the Fibonacci sequence, and column J is shifting the values forward by one to create the next sum. So this will continue. This will continue um, until our condition is satisfied, where in the last row, row 28 here, uh, we see that our I is now four, and it is no longer less than our count parameter of four, um, hence the for loop stops here. So the for loop uh, is, it uh, stops here. And because it stops here, it exits, the for loop stops, which is, so it stops at this curly bracket here, right? So then uh, we then return B because it will exit out of the, out of the for loop. And then the next, um, line is return b which is represented by column k so this will go all the way to the end and uh, we return b so in this iteration uh, b was updated to a value of threes our procedure for our example of console log of four will apply similarly to our example of console log of six so let me just scroll down and show you guys both examples so here console log of four will equals to three uh, return B is just essentially pulling from our column D uh, from our updated uh, B variable. And then console log of six, our output is eight. So eight is just pulling from our updated variable of B in column D. Uh, so let's just quickly compare our Excel analysis to our code pen to make sure that the outputs agree. So uh, let's pull up our code pen. So here in our code pen, we see that console log Fibonacci with an input of four, we have an output of three, and console log uh, Fibonacci with an input of six, we have an output of eight. So three and eight agrees to our Excel analysis of three and eight. So our analysis is correct. Let's take one last look at how our code ties to the Fibonacci sequence. So in the Fibonacci sequence, we see one, one, two, um, Let's take a look at our second iteration. So we can see one, one, and two here. So one, one, which is A and B, and then two is the updated B in column J. And then moving to the third iteration, what happens is what was initially A and B equals, uh, and then B equals to A, and A plus B up here, it shifts forward one. So this is what I've shown here. So it shifts forward one, so A and B uh, and then B equals A plus B uh, moves forward one. And the new A here is now reassigned to the previous B uh, value. And this shifting of one is uh, because of column K. So here in the second iteration, we see that A was reassigned to the, the previous value of B, as you can see that this cell is just essentially pulling from our temporary value, which was B. So this column K is causing that effect of uh, the sequence shifting forward one. This brings us to the end of the video. If you guys found this video helpful, I would definitely appreciate a like and a share. Uh, if you guys have alternative solutions, I would love to read them in the comments. Um, and if you want to stay tuned for future videos that you might find useful, uh, consider subscribing and thank you again for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video.